Welcome back to this River's Edge Arts Alliance production of Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol, adapted by Peter Warrist and the River's Edge Players. As we continue, the Arts Alliance would like to again thank all of you listening for your past support as we continue to offer what programming we can in the present we are in. Your continued support allows us to look ahead and plan for programming in the future that once again brings us together, celebrating art in the auditoriums, halls, and parks along the Assabet. We would like to especially thank Ella Rose Studios, Finn Chiropractic, Laser Sound Production, Malahis, and Warist Photography for underwriting support of this production. Ella Rose Studios offers custom vinyl products to enrich your life. We specialize in custom orders alongside a huge selection of bumper stickers, decals, apparel, cups, and decor. Shop us online at ellarosestudios.com. Our best sellers this season include a customized cookie plate and milk jug for Santa and a personalized elf with or without a face mask. Tons of last-minute gifts available for shipping throughout the U.S. or pickup from Worcester, Mass. Choose from one of our pre-designed styles or design your own for the perfect result. Visit EllaRoseStudios.com or find us on social media at Ella Rose Studios. Malahi's is an artisan cheese and specialty food shop that has a vast assortment of imported, domestic, and artisan local cheeses, hand-selected by their resident certified cheese professional, Katie Quinn. Ordering ahead for pickup is available. Visit their website at www.malahi's.com. Our goal at Malahi's is to make it easy to make your life more cheesy. Warist Photography provides safe, on-location, portrait and event photography for individuals and families, as well as brand identity consulting and photography for small businesses looking to make an impact. Whether you're posing for portraits to celebrate the new year or rolling out a brand new look for your business in 2021, Warist Photography has solutions for you. For more information or to book your next session, visit www.warristphotography.com. That's www.worrestphotography.com. As your friendly local chiropractor, Dr. Stephen C. Finn knows that the stress of 2020 has created more stiffness and pain than usual and that you will benefit from chiropractic treatments. Finn Chiropractic has remained open to patients throughout the pandemic and maintains strict health and safety protocols for the protection and peace of mind of all patients. Dr. Finn is accepting new patients and appointments are available. Call 508-485-1110. That's Finn Chiropractic with Dr. Stephen C. Finn. 508-485-1110. Yours in health. Laser Sound is our go-to provider for top quality light and sound production for concerts and shows. Whether it's one stage or many, big or small, Laser Sound has the expertise and equipment to support your next community event, school musical, or concert. Laser Sound is supporting virtual plays throughout the region, and your production could be next. Email lasersoundpro at gmail.com for more information. That's lasersoundpro at gmail.com. And remember, that's laser with a Z. And now, we return to the River's Edge Players Presents A Christmas Carol. What? <clears throat> What time could it be? What, what day is it? Oh. Come now. Who's there? Ghostly spirit whose coming was foretold? You could at least be punctual. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge, come in, man. Ah, I'm already in. Is that voice coming from my sitting room? Come in. Come in and know me better, ma'am. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Oh, never. I have never walked forth with the younger members of my family. Meaning, for I am very young. My elder siblings born these later years. Oh, I, I don't think I have. I'm afraid I have not. Have you had many brothers and sisters, Spirit? <laughs> More than 641. <laughs> mm, a tremendous family to provide for. Oh, bah. Spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and 
I learned a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you... Well, if you have aught to teach me, let me oh, profit by it. Touch my robe, and we will walk out amidst Christmas Day. Hey, is there a peculiar flavor in what you sprinkle from your torch? There is, my own. Would it apply to any kind of dinner on this day? To any kindly given. To a poor one most. Why to a poor one most? Because it needs it most. Come. <laughs> what has ever got your precious father then? And your brother, <laughs> Tiny Tim? What could be keeping Martha? Here's Martha, mother. Here's Martha, mother. Hurrah! They're such a goose, Martha. Why, bless your heart alive, my dear. How late you are. We'd a deal of work to finish up last night and had to clear away this morning, mother. Well... Never mind, so long as you are calm. Sit you down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm. Lord bless you. No, no, there's father coming. Hide, Martha, hide. Why, where's our Martha? Not coming. Not coming? Not coming on Christmas Day? Here I am, father. Merry Christmas. Come on, Tim. Let's listen to the pudding sing. And how did little Tim behave? As good as gold and better, somehow he gets thoughtful sitting by himself so much and thinks the strangest things you ever heard. He told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in church because he was a cripple, and it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Well, I'll get to mixing some Christmas cheer for later. Peter, fetch the goose from the baker's. Belinda, those potatoes sound ready. Check on them, dear. Yes, Mother. Yes, Mother. Everything smells wonderful, Mother. What a blessing. <sighs> Here's the goose. It's heavy. Very good, dear. Place that on the table. Careful now. Let's all bow our heads and give thanks for this food. Some hay meat and cannot eat, and some would eat that want it. But we hay meat and we can eat. Say, let the Lord be thanked. Cut the goose! Hurrah! Hurrah! Cut the goose! Cut the goose! Hurrah! Strange, spirit, that they would regard such a spread as a feast. Not so strange. Why, Bob Cratchit only earns 15 bob a week. Meager means for any family, but they make do. Hmm. I suppose it must be your seasoning that fills them so. Fills their spirit, yes. Why, I'm certain there never was such a fine goose as that. Such flavor and tenderness envied by only you, my dear. You do say the strangest things, my dear. Well, Belinda, clear the table. It's time for the pudding. Hooray! Hooray! We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now bring in the Christmas pudding. Now bring in the Christmas pudding. Now bring in the Christmas pudding and a cup of good cheer. What if it's underdone? What if it breaks? Someone climbed the wall and stole it while we ate. Look at all that steam. Oh, it already smells like the best pudding ever. All right, children, settle down. Here comes the pudding. Make way. Oh, a wonderful pudding. Why, I regard it as your greatest success since marrying me. Now that it's here, I must admit, I was worried over the quantity of flour, but it seems to have turned out just fine. It's beautiful, Mother. I can't wait. Everyone take a sip of the Christmas cheer when it comes around. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. Merry Christmas. Merry God Merry bless. Christmas. God bless us. Everyone. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No. No, no, oh no, kind spirit. Say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future... None other of my race will find him here. What then? 
If he be like to die, he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Man, if man you be in heart, not adamant, forbear that wicked cant until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what men shall live, what men shall die? It may be that in the sight of heaven, you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Oh, God, to hear the insect on the leaf pronouncing on the too much life among his hungry brothers in the dust. Mr. Scrooge. Bob? I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. Hmm. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I am sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear... Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake and the days, not for his. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. To Mr. To Mr. Scrooge. Scrooge. Well, <clears throat> I think I ought to announce to the whole family... I have my eye on a situation at the haberdashery for Master Peter, which would bring in, if obtained, full five and sixpence weekly. I suppose I'll be a man of business soon. Not so soon. If you're to be a man of business. Sooner than you'd expect, Belinda. Why, I saw a countess and a lord some days ago, and the lord was much about as tall as Peter. They had come in to inquire about a hat for the countess. Such long hours, I'm looking forward to a good long rest tomorrow. In fact, I mean to lie abed all morning. You children won't be able to lie abed all morning if you don't head off there soon. Come now. Come. We must be off. There is much yet to see. Spirit, the streets are so full of people on their way to friendly gatherings. You might think that no one was at home to give them welcome when they got there. And blessings upon it. Such joy and mirth, it stretches all across the world. Come, there is still more. Hold my robe. Spirit, we're not headed out to sea. If I should fall, I would surely drown. Hold on tight, then. Even out here among the stormy sea, from deep below decks to the top of the crow's nest, they know me. Listen. <laughs> he, said, he said that Christmas was a humbug as I live. He believed it too. More shame for him, Fred. <laughs> He's a comical old fellow, that's the truth. And not so pleasant as he might be. However, his offenses carry their own punishment, and I have nothing to say against him. I'm sure he is very rich, Fred. At least you always tell me so. <laughs> what of that, my dear? His wealth is of no use to him. He don't do any good with it. He don't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't the satisfaction of thinking <laughs> <laughs> that he is ever going to benefit us with it. No patience with him. No patience at all. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no patience. No. Oh, I have. I'm sorry for him. I, I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill whims? Himself, always. Here, he takes it into his head to dislike us. And he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? He don't lose much of a dinner. Indeed. I think he loses a very good dinner. <laughs> Simply delightful. A piece of heaven. Lovely. That's very good. <laughs> well, I'm very glad to hear it because I have a great faith in these young housekeepers. What do you say, Topper? A bachelor is a wretched outcast who has no right to take center stage and express an opinion on the subject. Uh, do go on, Fred. He never finished what he begins to say. He is such a ridiculous fellow. <laughs> 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 I was only 
only, I was only going to say that the consequence of his taking a dislike to us and not making merry with us is, as I think, that he loses some pleasant moments which could do him no harm. I am sure that he loses pleasanter companions than he can find in his own thoughts, either in his moldy old office or his dusty chambers. I mean to give him the same chance every year, whether he likes it or not, for I pity him. He may rail at Christmas till he dies, but he can't help thinking better of it. I defy him. If he finds me going there in good temper year after year and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? If it only puts him in the vein to leave his poor clerk 50 pounds, that's something. And I think I shook him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the notion! You shook him! <laughs> oh my. Let's have another drink, and then I think a song. A song, yes, but then another game, Fred. Uh, are, are these parties all filled with music and games, spirit? Oh, oh, anything that brings joy and mirth to kith and kin at Christmas time has my blessing upon it. <laughs> Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night and oh, the frost was cruel. When a poor man came inside, gathering winter's fuel. We must be going now. <laughs> oh, oh, please, spirit, let's stay until the guests depart. <laughs> there is much yet to be done, and very little time no, to do it. There's a new game. Uh, one half hour, spirit, only one. I have a good one thought up for yes or no. Shall we play? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay. I will start. Is it an animal? Yes. Is it a live animal? Yes. A pleasant one? Oh, heavens no. A rather disagreeable one. <laughs> well, is it a savage animal? In a way. Does it roar? No. Does it growl and grunt? Oh, sometimes. It's from somewhere exotic. Oh, no. More local than the countryside? Oh. No. Is it found in the city? Yes. Will it be seen okay. to walk on the street? Yes. Is it made a show of? No. Is it found on a lead? No. Does it live in a menagerie? No. Is it brought to the market to be killed? No. Is it a horse? No. An ass then? No. Oh. Oh. How about oh. a cow? Uh, or a bull? Is it a tiger? No. No. Uh, no. A dog? A dog? A pig? No. A cat? Uh, no. A bear? No, no, what? no, no, what? no. What? I have found it. I have found it out. I have found it out. I know what it is, Fred. I know what it is. What is it? It's your Uncle Scrooge. Your reply to is it a bear ought to have been yes. Quite so. I might have got to it first if you had. At that no, he quite left my mind. <laughs> oh, he has given us plenty of merriment, I am sure, and it would be ungrateful not to drink to his health. Here is a glass of mulled wine ready to our hand at the moment, and I say Uncle Scrooge! Oh, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Scrooge! Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge! Oh, yes. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man, whatever he is. He want to take it from me, but may he have it nevertheless. Uncle Scrooge! Come now, just one more stop. Uh, oh, you, you have grown so old, spirit. Are spirits' lives so short? My life upon this globe is very brief. <clears throat> it ends tonight. <laughs> tonight? Tonight, at midnight. Hark, the time is drawing near. Forgive me if I am not justified in what I ask, but I see something strange and not belonging to yourself protruding from your skirts. I is it a foot or a claw? It might be a claw, for the flesh there is upon it. Look here. Oh, man, look here, look. Look down here. Spirit, are, are all of them yours? These wretched children are man's, and they cling to me, appealing from their fathers. This boy is ignorance. This girl is want. Beware them both, and all of their degree, but most of all, beware this boy, 
for on his brow I see that written which is doom unless the writing be erased. Deny it. Slander those who tell it ye. Admit it for your factuous purposes and make it worse. And bide the end. Have they no refuge or resource? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Scrooge looked about him for the ghost and saw it not. As the last stroke ceased to vibrate, he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley and lifting up his eyes, beheld a solemn phantom, draped and hooded, coming like a mist along the ground towards him. The phantom slowly, gravely, silently approached. When it came near him, Scrooge bent down upon his knee, for in the very air through which the spirit moved, it seemed to scatter gloom and mystery. It was shrouded in a deep black garment which concealed its head, its face, its form, and left nothing of it visible save one outstretched hand. But for this it would have been difficult to detach its figure from the night and separate it from the darkness by which it was surrounded. He felt that it was tall and stately when it came up beside him, and that its mysterious presence filled him with a solemn dread. He knew no more, for the spirit neither spoke nor moved. Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? The spirit answered not, but pointed onward with its hand. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that so, spirit? The upper portion of the garment was contracted for an instant in its folds, as if the spirit had inclined its head. That was the only answer he received. Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? <sighs> lead on, lead on. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me, I know. Lead on, spirit. No, I don't know much about it. Either way, I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. Oh, God knows. <sighs> what has he done with his money? I haven't heard. Left it to his company, perhaps? He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> it's likely to be a very cheap funeral, for upon my life, I don't know of anybody to go to it. Mm. Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if a lunch is provided, but I must be fed if I make one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am the most disinterested among you, after all, for I never wear black gloves and I never eat lunch. But I'll offer to go if anybody else will. When I come to think of it, I'm not at all sure that I wasn't his most particular friend, mm -hmm. for we used to stop and speak whenever we met. <laughs> I, I know these men, Spirit. But what purpose does this conversation serve? Of what sad creatures passing do they make light? I will mark well everything you show me, Spirit. I shall especially like to observe my own future to better understand your lesson. Lead on. What is this dismal place, spirit? I have not before visited this part of town. <laughs> <laughs> Let the charwoman alone to be the first. Let the laundress alone to be the second. Look here, old Joe, what serendipity if we haven't all met here without meaning it. You couldn't have met in a better place. Come into the parlor. You were made free of it long ago, you know, and the other two ain't strangers. Stop till I shut the door of the shop. Ah, how it squeaks. There ain't such a rusty bit of metal in this place as its own hinges, I believe. 
And I, I'm sure there's no such old bones here as mine. <laughs> We're all suitable to our own calling. We're well matched. Come into the parlor. Come into the parlor. What odds then? What odds, Mrs. Dilber? Every person has a right to take care of themselves. He always did. That's true indeed. No man more so. Why then don't stand staring as if he was afraid, woman. Who's the wiser? We're not going to pick holes in each other's coats, I suppose. I should hope not. Very well then. That's enough. Who's the worse for the loss of a few things like these? Not a dead man, I suppose. Oh, no indeed. If he wanted to keep him after he was dead, a wicked old screw, why wasn't he natural in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have had somebody to look after him when he was struck with death instead of lying, gasping out his last there, alone by himself. It's the truest word that ever was spoke. It's a judgment on him. I wish it was a little heavier judgment, and it should have been. You may depend upon it if I could have laid my hands on anything else. Open that bundle, old Joe, and let me know the value of it. Speak out plain. I'm not afraid to be the first, nor afraid for them to see it. We know pretty well that we were helping ourselves before we met here, I believe. It's no sin. Open the bundle, Joe. Here, Joe. Mine will be quicker than hers. Sheets and towels. A little wearing apparel. Two old-fashioned silver teaspoons. A pair of sugar tongs and a few boots. Well... There you are. I always give too much to the ladies. It's a weakness of mine, and that's the way I'll ruin myself. That's your account. If you asked me for another penny and I made it an open art question, I'd repent of being so liberal and knock off half a crown. And now undo my bundle, Joe. What do you call this? Bed curtains. Bed curtains. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean to say you took him down, rings and all, with him lying there? Yes, I do. Why not? You were born to make your fortune. <laughs> then you'll certainly do it. I certainly shan't hold my hand when I can get anything in it by reaching it out. For the sake of such a man as he was, I promise you, Joe. Don't drop that oil upon the blankets now. His blankets? Whose else's do you think? He isn't likely to take cold without him, I dare say. I hope he didn't die of anything catching. Eh? Don't you be afraid of that. I ain't so fond of his company that I'd loiter about him for such things if he did. Ah, you may look through that shirt till your eyes ache, but you won't find a hole in it nor a threadbare place. It's the best he had and a fine one, too. They'd have wasted it if it hadn't been for me. What do you call wasting of it? Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure. Somebody was fool enough to do it, but I took it off again. A calico ain't good enough for such a purpose. It isn't good enough for anything. It's quite as becoming to the body. He can't look uglier than he did in that one. <laughs> this is the end of it, you see. He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive. To profit us when he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit, I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. If there is any person in the town who feels emotion caused by this man's death, show that person to me, Spirit, I beseech you. Is it good or bad? bad. We are quite ruined? No, there is hope yet, Caroline. If he relents, there is. Nothing is past hope if such a miracle has happened. He's past relenting. He's dead. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I I'm sorry to be so happy at such a thing. What the half-drunken woman whom I told you of last night said to me when I tried to see him and obtain a week's delay, and what I thought was a mere excuse to avoid me turns out to have been quite true. He was not only very ill, but dying then. Well, to whom will our debt be transferred? I don't know. But before that time, we shall be ready with the money. And even though we were not, it would be a bad fortune, indeed, to find so merciless a creditor and his successor. We may sleep tonight with light hearts, Caroline. 
let me see some tenderness connected with the death. Or that dark chamber spirit, which we left just now, will be forever present to me. Where are you leading me, spirit? Is that the Cratchit house? It seems much quieter than it should be, spirit. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. I'm sorry, mother. I'll stop reading. No, it's not that, Peter. I shall have to set the sewing aside for now. The color hurts my eyes. They're better now again. It makes them weak by candlelight, and I wouldn't show weak eyes to your father when he comes home for the world. It must be near his time. Past it, rather. But I think he has walked a little slower than he used to these last few evenings, Mother. I have known him walk with... I have known him walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed. And so have I, often. And so have I. But he was very light to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble. And there is your father at the door. Hello, children. Hello, my good wife. Welcome home, father. My dear, you and our industrious daughters have made quick work of that sewing. You will be done long before Sunday. Sunday? You went today then, Robert? Yes, my dear. I, I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place it is. But you'll see it often. I promised him that I would walk there on a Sunday. My little, my little child, my little child. I saw Mr. Scrooge's nephew Fred today in the street, and I was looking, well, just a little down, you know, and so he inquired what happened to distress me. Well, he is the kindest, plainest spoken gentleman you have ever heard, so I told him, and you know what he said? What did he say to you, dear? He said, I am heartily sorry for it, Mr. Cratchit, and heartily sorry for your good wife. Heartily sorry. If I can be of service to you in any way, he said, giving me his card, that's where I live. Pray come to me. Now, it wasn't for the sake of anything he might be able to do for us so much as for the kind way that this was quite delightful. It really seemed as if he had known our tiny Tim and felt with us. I'm sure he's a good soul. You would be surer of it, my dear, if you saw and spoke to him. I shouldn't be at all surprised. Mark what I say if he got Peter a better situation. Only hear that, Peter. And then Peter will be keeping company with someone and setting up for himself. Get along with you. It's just likely as not one of these days, though there's plenty of time for that, my dear. But however and whenever we part from one another, I'm sure we shall none of us forget poor tiny Tim. Shall we? Or this first parting that was among us. Never. No, never. 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 <laughs> and I know, I know, my dears, that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, although he was a little child, we shall not quarrel easily among ourselves and forget poor tiny Tim in doing it. No. No, never. of course, of course not, not, Father. Never. I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy. Spectre, something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. Tell me, tell me what man that was whose death was so discussed. The ghost of Christmas yet to come conveyed him, as before, though at a different time, he thought. Indeed, there seemed no order in these latter versions, save that they were in the future. Into the resorts of businessmen, but showed him not himself. Indeed, the spirit did not stay for anything, but went straight on, as to the end just now desired, until besought by Scrooge to tarry for a moment. This court, through which we hurry now, is where my place of occupation is, and has been for a length of time. I see the house. Let me behold what I shall be in days to come. 
The house is yonder. Why do you point away? The inexorable finger underwent no change. Scrooge hastened to the window of his office and looked in. It was an office still, but not his. The furniture was not the same, and the figure in the chair was not himself. The phantom pointed as before. He joined it once again, and wondering why and whither he had gone, accompanied it till they reached an iron gate. He paused to look round before entering. A churchyard. Here, then, the wretched man whose name he had now to learn lay underneath the ground. It was a worthy place. Walled in by houses, overrun by grass and weeds, the growth of vegetation's death, not life. Choked up with too much burying. Fat with repleted appetite. A worthy place. The spirit stood among the graves and pointed down to one. He advanced toward it, trembling. The phantom was exactly as it had been, but he dreaded that he saw a new meaning in its solemn shape. Before I draw nearer to that stone to which you point, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or are they shadows of the things that may be only? Men's courses will will foreshadow certain ends to which, if persevered in, they must lead. But but if the courses be departed from, the, the ends will change. Say it is thus with what you show me. Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge? Am I that man whose death was so reviled? No, spirit, no. Oh, no, spirit, spirit, hear me. I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been but for this intervention. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Oh, good spirit, good spirit, your nature intercedes for me and pities me. Assure me, assure me that I may yet change these shadows you have shown me by an altered life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons they teach. Oh, tell me, tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. My bedpost, my bed, my room. <laughs> oh, I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob Marley, heaven and the Christmas time be praised for this. I say it on my knees, old Jacob, on my knees. They are not torn down. They are not torn down. Rings and all, they are here. I am here. The shadows of the things that would have been may be dispelled. They will be. I know they will. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. <laughs> I'm as I'm as giddy as a drunken man. A, a merry Christmas to everybody. A happy New Year to all the world. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. There's the door by which the ghost of Jacob Marley entered. There's the corner where the ghost of Christmas present sat. I, there's the window where I saw the wandering spirits. It's all right. It's all true. It all happened. <laughs> I, I don't know what day of the month it is. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm, I'm quite a baby. Never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Hello. Oop, hello there. Look at that heavenly sky, filled with birds in flight. Ah, smell the sweet fresh air. 
Oh, listen to those merry bells. Ho, ho, ho. Glorious, glorious. You there, boy. What's today? Huh? What's today, my fine fellow? <laughs> Why, Christmas Day. Christmas Day? It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. Of course they can do. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hey, you, you, young man, young man, hello, my fine fellow. Hello. <laughs> do you know the Polters in the next street by Malahi's cheese shop? I should hope I did. An intelligent boy, a remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey, but the big one. What, what the one as big as me? <laughs> the delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. Well, it's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it. <laughs> Walker. No, no, no. I am in earnest. Go and buy it and tell him to bring it here that I may give them the direction where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. <gasps> Come back with him in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. Half a crown? Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> less than, greater than. I'll, I'll give him a whole crown anyways. <laughs> I'll send the turkey to Bob Cratchit. <laughs> he shan't know who sent it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Joe Miller never made such a joke as sending it to Bob's will be. I hope the boy isn't too fast. I'll have to hurry to the door before the polter gets here. Oh, that knocker. Ah, oh, that knocker. I shall love it as long as I live. I scarcely ever looked at it before. What an honest expression it has in its face. It's a wonderful knocker. <gasps> hurry! Hurry, sir! <laughs> <clears throat> Half a crown? Ah, here's the turkey. Hello, whoop, how are you? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Why, why, it's impossible to carry that to Camden Town. You must have a cab. <laughs> Off with you now. Here's the address. I must make ready quickly. There's so much to do and see. <laughs> it's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. I'll go out for a walk in this crisp, cold air, and I'll call on my nephew this afternoon. Good morning. A Merry Christmas, sir. And a Merry Christmas, yes, to you as well. Good morning, sir. A Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Of all the blithe sounds I have ever heard, those are the blithest in my ears. <laughs> Merry Christmas and a good morning. Oh. Good morning. Oh, that fine gentleman. It pains me to think how this gentleman would look upon me, but I see what path lays before me. <sighs> My dear, how do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. It was very kind of you. A Merry Christmas to you. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, 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 that's my name. And, and I fear it may not be pleasant to you. Allow me to ask your pardon. And will you have the goodness to... <laughs> Lord, bless me. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please, not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favor? My dear sir, I don't know what to say to such munificence. Don't, don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will you come and see me? I will. Ah, thank ye. I am much obliged to you. I thank you 50 times. Bless you. <laughs> well, I, I, I never dreamed that any walk, that, that anything could bring so much happiness. Well, enough putting it off. Here's Fred's door for the dozenth time. Now to it. Is your master at home, my dear? Yes, sir. Where is he, my love? He's in the dining room, sir, along with the mistress. I'll show you upstairs, if you please. Thank ye. He knows me. I'll go in here, my dear. Fred! Merciful heavens! Oh, why, bless my soul! Who's that? <laughs> it's I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. 
Will you let me in, Fred? Let you in? Of course, of course! Welcome, Uncle, and a Merry Christmas! Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen When the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel When a poor man came inside, gathering winter's fuel Oh, if I can only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. <laughs> oh, this will be such fun. Ah, good, empty. <laughs> and he's late too, perfect. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, hello. I'm behind my time. What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? Step this way, sir, if you please. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I, I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. Mm. Now I'll tell you what, my friend. I am not going to stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore... <laughs> and therefore I'm about to raise your salary. <laughs> uh, my, my, a my merry son. Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. And we will discuss your affairs this very afternoon. Make up the fires and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another I, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> yes, sir. Bless you, Mr. Scrooge. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good new city in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them. He thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes in grins, as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. Ever afterwards it was said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. We hope you have enjoyed this River's Edge Arts Alliance production of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This production was directed by Jen Finn, stage managed by Danny Neufer, and features the voices of Stephen D'Alessandro, Mark Dernberger, Russ Gannon, Mike Buck, Marin Caulfield, Cherry Lynn Zinger, Ariella Greenspan, Ellen King, Elizabeth Clement, Casey Carlino, Mia Mercurio, Sarah Worist, Kathleen O'Connor, Maya Harrington, Jody Schoolcraft, Justine Craven Getz, Carolyn Mitchell, and Ellen Church. Editing and recording by Peter Worst and Laser Sound Productions. The song Kesh Jig Lightroom Fancy, performed by Sanja, is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0. Full license information available at creativecommons.org. For the latest information about arts along the Asabet, head to upwitharts.org. <laughs>